Yeah, but I'm here. And uh, I thought, you know, we went through a lot of change. I remember when I came to London the first times and guys wrote about our wines, um, there were notes of overripeness and all of that. I thought, what do these people know? You know? But, you know, they were right. You know, I think one or two of those people sit in this room today, you know, that initially there was criticism that our wines were too ripe, too work, too, you know, but when you're 28, 30, 29 years old, you know, you're full of testosterone, you, um, you want to show the world what you can do, and it's obvious that you, you will do some, that there'll be over-extraction and over-oaking and all of that, and just over everything, and sometimes the tavoir is enough. So I had to learn that piece where the, the soil's good, don't worry about that. If you farm well, the grapes will be good, and then it's all good. You don't need to then put more good on top of it. It's all, it that, that in itself is enough. So I brought a cross section. We're actually going to taste, oh, um, we're going to actually taste from the oldest wines to the, to the youngest to actually follow the line of development that happened within within our domain. Um, the, the big thing is obviously to make, um, one thing when I started I was really, um, obviously perfection is this kind of notion that every person wants to make the perfect wine or the ultimate wine and or the best wine or whatever that, um, whatever that definition could be. But there's always this thing, it's just going to be the best, the best and whatever, perfection. Um, and also starting in South Africa, you know, 20 years ago, whatever, we didn't have a massive history. So you, you start off with kind of copying things, you know. So um, I told Sophie that sometimes a good copy is still better than a bad original, you know. <laughs> so you kind of start working with a concept and then... For me, the, the definite thing now is to, to make the quintessential African wine. You know, what, what will this African wine look like? Because we don't know. So, it's, it's not even trying to get back to the dodo. You just don't even know it's a bird. You know, you, you're trying to get to something that's out there um, and it's to be found, but it's, it's, it doesn't exist today in any form or any way. So, it's... We're planting a lot of new grapes, and as you're going to taste the wines, I'll talk you through them as grapes were added on. Um, we've just planted uh, 30 new varieties. Um, you know, and it's for us, it makes sense in South Africa being most of our grapes are planted between the 33 and the 34 latitude. So we shouldn't be copying grape varieties that in Europe's planted on the 45. That's not a good first shopping. That's like shopping in the wrong hardware store. You know, we, we need to be taking grapes from Sardinia and Sicily and Morocco and southern, uh, southern Italy and Croatia and like areas where, where these grapes grow in, in parcels where they can actually deal with the sun and deal with the heat. Because our challenge in South Africa is we need to cool things down. We need to run away from the sun. We, we need to find acidity and freshness and all of those. So we need to plant grapes that can kind of take the heat. Um, so, and the other thing that I had to realize, and, and we are planting these varieties, but if we plant, if we've now planted, say, 30, you know, we, we probably should have planted 200. Because by the virtue of how these things work, you have about a 90% failure rate. So only if you plant 30, you might end up with 3. So we've got to plant really 100 to end up with 10. What is an honest wine? An honest wine is a wine that above my own personal beliefs or my own convictions or my own ego or my own drive is a wine that that resonates the place more than anything else. And the things that I had, that I changed in 09 before we get to the last two wines is the first thing I realized is that the, the wine writers in London were right about what they wrote about our early wines. They were of extracted and they were too dark and they were too old. 
So I moved away from two things. We, we decided to not pick any grapes anymore over 14% alcohol. Because the first two wines are both at 14.8. 14.8, 14.7 there. So, earlier picking. <coughs> My neighbor, I don't, some of you know Adi Barnost, he always says, and I'm going to quote him because it's one of, he's got many great quotes. But this one is, it's not just, it's one of the ones that's great and it's, it's, it bears a lot of truth. Is He says you don't, physi physiological rightness doesn't exist. It's only psychological rightness. It's where do you see that wine in 20 years time? And if you want to talk about psychological rightness, we today pick on that psychological rightness. We're not picking over 14% alcohol wine because we're not drinking over 40. I, I can't, I'm getting older. I can't drink over 14% anymore. You know, so, and it's not the wines that I buy anymore. So why produce them? So that's the first line we put in the sand. Nothing over 14 the second line is, I grew very adverse to oak. I think wood, some of my favorite wines in the world have 100% new wood in it. But it doesn't work in Swatland. Our, if you look at where barrels do really well in the world, it's all in continental, cool, cool climates or grapes with great reductivity. You know? Swatland's grapes are all low redox potential. They oxidative of nature and they're always very ripe we must run and what does a barrel do it makes a wine ripe we need to run away from ripeness because we have all too much sun so so barrels is not a good option for us so today um, we might get to five percent with renewal in the winery and and the Kulamela for now the first 12 months it's in old casks barrels and then at 12 months we rack it into very big old food was. you know that's thick stave no new wood get away from the wood because if you talk about this African wine if oak doesn't really belong in the wine then the oak's almost gonna it's also gonna hide that true character of what an African wine will look like there's wines in the world that I've been in cellars where the guy puts the wine 100% new wood and I can't taste the barrel it's there, but I mean, I can really see that the well, I can really see what the wine's about, but that's not in the swat line. So we drop wood, um, and the last thing we did, the third big thing, and that was the is extraction. We stopped doing pijages. We fill the cubes. Um, they're about 70% whole bunch, 30% destem, and we'll we'll take two or three buckets a day with. And we'll, we, we'll circulate them. Well, maybe we take 100, 120 liters out of our, our fermentation cubes and we just circulate it over the top. Like a tea, just simmers there. Um, six weeks on the, on, the, on, the, on the combination of mostly whole bunches and some the distemmed fruits just to get some liquid so that you can get a protection and get a fermentation with carbonic gas. And then we basket press it into all the barrels then into big food risks. And I'm going to use this word unripe. They all look the same. Whereas you will miss the terroir with a 14 and a half alcohol wine, you're also going to miss the alcohol, the, the terroir, the 12 alcohol wine, which isn't in a 12 alcohol region. I think 12 alcohol wines in Jura is amazing. I go there, the food's amazing, Jura is insane. 12 alcohol wines make sense in Jura makes complete sense. Reds. 12 alcohol wines in Malmesbury, Swatland doesn't make sense. You, a grape needs a certain threshold to get to, to have complete expression of the terroir. And picking grapes very early just for the sake of freshness is going to mean that often you're going to miss that terroir. And you're going to have a, you'll have a very unanimous line through your cellar, but you're going to lack you're going to lose the true, the true DNA of the site. So it's a, it's a, it's a huge discussion. Um, you know, what's the right ripeness and whatever. And maybe it's got to do with this physio physiological ripeness where you see the wine. But I also think a lot of the wines that's just picked at 12%, because at 12% alcohol, if you pick there, 
you've still got a lot of asset, your pH is low, winemaking is easy, it's a breeze. But if a vineyard expresses itself really, truly at 13.8, you need much more dynamics in terms of your philosophy and interpretation to get that to bottom.